a twist. Sir? Oh. I hope I shall have the honor of your intimate acquaintance. Very glad to see you, Oliver. Very. Aren't we boys? Hmm? Oh. Dorgeria tells me you've come to London to seek your fortune. Yes, sir. Well, we shall have to see what we can do to help you, won't we? Thank you, sir. Are you hungry? Yes. Would you like a sausage? Yes, sir. Charlie, take the sausages off the fire. Don't you give your friend a seat near the wall? <coughs> Here, these sausages are moldy. Shut up, drink it, Jim. <laughs> ah, I see you're staring at the pocket handkerchiefs. Quite a few of them, in there. Yeah, yeah. We've just hung them out for the wash. The wash, that's all, my dear. Is this a laundry, then, sir? <laughs> no, 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 no. No, it's not a laundry, no, no. No, that would be quite a good idea, really, wouldn't it? Yeah, except our line of business pays a little better, doesn't it, boy? You see, Oliver, in this life, one thing counts in the bank, large amounts. I'm afraid these don't grow on trees. You've got to pick a pocket or two. You've got to pick a pocket or two. Wait! You've got to pick a pocket or two. Large amounts don't grow on trees. You've got to pick a bucket or two. Let's show Oliver how it's done, shall we, my dear? Oliver, get up, Pop. Have a good view. Come on, boys. Why should we break our backs stupidly paying tax? Better get some untaxed income. Better pick a pocket or two. You've got to pick a pocket or two, boys. You've got to pick a pocket or two. Why do we all break our backs? Better pick a pocket or two. No, that's fine, that's unfair. Bit of a history lesson, Oliver. Robin Hood, what a crook, gave away what he took. Charities, fine, subscribe to mine. Get out and pick a pocket or two. You've got to pick a pocket or two, boys. You've got to pick a pocket or two. Robin Hood was far too good. He had to pick a pocket or two. My merry man. I'll tell you something else. Take a tip from Bill Sykes. He can whip what he likes. I recall he started small. He had to pick a pocket or two. You've got to pick a pocket or two, boys. <laughs> Dear old gent, passing by, something nice takes his eye. Everything's clear, attack the rear, get in and pick a pocket or two. You got to pick a pocket or two, boy. You've got to pick a pocket or two. Come here, get back. Oh, the mirror tracks the rear. You've got to pick a pocket or two. When I see someone rich, both my thumbs start to itch. Only to find some peace of mind. I have to pick a pocket or two. You've got to pick a pocket or two. More. Got to pick a pocket or two. Just to find some peace of mind, we, we have, have to pick a pocket or two. Put them all back. Come on. I said all of them. Come in. What a crook. Good luck. <laughs> Plummy and slam! Nancy! Ladies. Boys, the ladies is here! <laughs> ladies! Poor Rocket M! Oh, well, I'm less of that if you don't mind. Where's the 
gin then, Fagin. No, all in moderation, my dear, all in moderation. Too much gin can be a dangerous thing for a pure young girl. Oh, and what's wrong with a bit of danger then, eh, Mr. Fagin? After all, it's the only bit of excitement we have. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And who would deny us that small pleasure, eh? Small pleasures, small pleasures, who would deny us these? Not me! Gin <laughs> and God is large, measures no skimping if you please. I rough it, I love it, life is a game of chance. I never tire of it, leading a merry dance. If you don't mind having to go without things, it's a fine life. You don't mind taking it like it turns out. It's a fine life. It's a fine life. I keep the candle burning until it burns out. It's a fine life. It's a fine life. I know you sometimes do come by. The occasional black eye. You can always cover one till he blacks the other one, but you don't dare cry. <laughs> no, flouted, no. Just afford what future? What matters? We've got our bed and board. If you don't mind having to deal with Fagin, <laughs> what is the fine life? So disease rats threaten to bring the plague in. It's the fine life. It's a fine but the grass is green and then on the right side of the fence. <laughs> forgot to tell you. This is our new lodger, Mr. Oliver Twist, Esquire. Oh, charmed. Pleased to meet you, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're all ladies and gents here. They were all quiet. Oh, don't take no notice of them, Oliver. Right. Just because you got manners and they ain't. <laughs> you lot, you lot, you wouldn't know quality if you saw it. None of you. No, you wouldn't know. You. Dodger, Dodger, have you ever seen the way them quality gentlemen treat their ladies? <laughs> of course I have. Well, shall we show them how it's done? Definitely. Yeah, come on, Nancy, give us a show on the stage. Come on. Get yeah. a little room. Get a little room. So, how's it go then, Dodger? It's all bowing and hats off. And, and don't let your petticoats dangle in the mud, my darling. No, and I'll go last. No, I'll go last. <laughs> I do anything for you. Yeah, anything for you means everything to me. I know that I'd go anywhere for your smile. Anywhere for your smile. Everywhere 
I'd say. Mm, would you climb a hill? Anything. Wear a that bow dill? Anything. Leave me all your will? Anything. Even fight my bill? What fisty cuffs? I'd kiss <laughs> everything for one kiss. Everything. Yes, I do. Anything. Anything. Anything for you. <laughs> Oliver, you copy Dodge or I'll help you with the words. I'll do anything. I'd do anything for you, dear. For you, dear. Anything for you, me. For you, me. Everything to me. Come down, love. How you doing, Wayne? 